Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen we have the puzzle that Mark has persuaded me to try. It didn't take much persuading, to be very honest with you. Um, it's this puzzle that Richard Stolk has, has recommended to us. And it's by Arvid Bars, the Dutch constructor. And it has a very interesting history. Um, so I'm going to tell you about it now. I mean, the, the, way, the way we came to hear about this puzzle is that I got an email from Richard uh, basically saying that he'd seen we'd done a few XV Sudokus on the channel and were enjoying them. And had we seen what he described as an incredible, incredible gem of a puzzle uh, by Arvid. And, and we hadn't seen it. Um, and we looked into it a little bit. Now, this puzzle comes from the 2017 World Grand Prix Final, which is something that happens at the World Sudoku Championship each year. And basically, they sit down the, uh, the very best solvers in the world who've competed in the Grand Prix online over the year. And they, let me just find it. They all have to sit at a desk exam style. They are presented with a series of puzzles. You have to do them in order. Um, so initially you can see they were given a classic puzzle and look at the times taken for the classic puzzle here. It's quite, it's quite indicative, I think, of the level of competitor we are talking about here. Sunjai Quack, under two minutes. And now this isn't, this isn't, you know, a New York Times easy puzzle. This is a world championship level classic Sudoku. And we have a time here of under two minutes. I mean, all of the times are frankly incredibly quick for what will be a reasonably difficult classic Sudoku. Um, and what happens is you solve the puzzle. If you get it correct, the marker takes one minute to check. And then if you're correct, you get the next puzzle, which was the XV puzzle, which is the subject of today's video. Now here we have something quite, quite extraordinary going on. And I cannot think of another example of a puzzle I've ever seen in a competition of this nature where the times for solving it have been so incredibly varied and at the top end, mind blowingly long. I mean, well, we'll get on to it, but just just let's just have a look at some of these times. Sunjai Quack was the fastest. He did it in what's that about seven, seven minutes, but that includes a minute of checking. So six minutes for Sunjai Quack for this puzzle, which is it's still a long time. Don't get me wrong for solvers of this standard. Six minutes is a long time for a Sudoku. Um, and then we have the vast majority of them taking well over 10 minutes. I mean, Kota Moranishi, three-time world Sudoku champion, has taken over 15 minutes to solve this puzzle. I mean, you know, Kota is a, a bona fide genius. So already we're getting to problems. But the one that really stands out for me is this one. Um, now, Thomas is a friend of mine and he is... I mean, he is a bona fide genius, um, three time world Sudoku champion, world puzzle champion, regularly used to finish the uh, the US puzzle championship each year. And if you've ever tried that to finish it in the time that you're given is absurd. I mean, it is, it is brain power that is off the scale. And Thomas, you know, I mean, he would have a claim to be the best Sudoku solver that ever lived, in my opinion. Uh, certainly when he was really able to devote time for, to puzzles, he was almost unstoppable. Uh, nowadays, he, thankfully, he's off um, sort of curing medical, pro very, very difficult medical problems. And, you know, I can think of no one better to do that. No one you'd rather be working on those sorts of, of questions because, you know, it, he is just phenomenally clever. Um, now, just look at the time. 50 minutes. Uh, that includes one error. So I imagine what what's happened is he must have he must have made a mistake on the puzzle or something and then found it very difficult to unwound, unwind what's probably, you know, a Sudoku with lots of pencil marks all over it. But I can I, I, I well. I mean, Thomas, I know he watches the channel sometimes. He may he may comment. But uh, for Thomas to take this long on a puzzle is absolutely unheard of. So this this puzzle is something else altogether. Um, and, you know, for that reason, it's slightly daunting to try it in a video. But the fact that Sanjay has done it in as quick time suggests there's a trick. So if we find the trick, hopefully we'll be good to go. If we don't find the trick, this is going to be a very long video and quite embarrassing. Although if I do beat 45 minutes, I still beat probably the best Sudoku solver that ever lived. So happy days. Shouldn't count my chickens, though. And that's what my parents always said to me. Do not count your chickens before they hatch. So, yeah, I won't do that. Um, 
But yeah, th this puzzle is, I mean, it's stunning. The standard variation in the time solving times here is something you very rarely see in these competitions. Um, it tends to be far, far more regular. And yeah, this 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 is really very very interesting. Um, so here's the puzzle. Now we've done XV on the puzzle on the channel a bit recently, so hopefully you'll be familiar with the rules. But let me read them to you anyway. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. All horizontally and vertically neighbouring digits with the sum ten are marked with X. All horizontally and vertically neighbouring digits with the sum five are marked with V. There's actually no V's in this puzzle. Look. So what we're looking at here is dominoes. So if a domino adds up to 10, there must be an X. If it adds up to 5, there must be a V. If, it, if there is neither X nor V dividing the cells in a domino, it cannot add to 10 or 5. And the negative constraint often in these puzzles is key to solving them efficiently. Do have a go. I mean, how often do you get a chance to do a puzzle that's, you know, that's flummoxed one of the world's great intellects very very rarely the way to play of course is to click the link under the video and with that and with the aeroplane going overhead let's get cracking um now oh i tell you what before we get cracking though can we just take a moment to settle back and admire the construction the beauty of this setup We've got symmetrically given sort of pattern of di digits in the bottom of the grid, symmetrically laid out X's in the top of the grid. No V's at all. I mean, it is a gorgeous looking Sudoku, um, you know, and when you get constructors like Richard Stolk, who is one of the very, very best constructors in the world, specifically taking time to write and say, look, this puzzle is something else. You. I mean, it really is a testament to how, how good the constructing powers are that have been sort of focused on this puzzle. Anyway, with all with that, let's go. Let's go. What am I going to do to start with? Enough gibbering. Um, we can write. Yes, we can. I can enter a digit, actually. I can enter a digit by thinking about box nine. Now, why is box nine catching my eye? Well, it's this one that sits in the middle of the box because the one touches all four of those squares. Now, uh, if any of those squares was a four, you would have to see a V between the one and the four. Now, as there's no V, there's no four. So the four must live in one of those cells. And that means by Sudoku, that square is a four. And we are off and running, chasing down one of the finest solvers who ever lived. Um, okay, now let's do it again. Actually, the one in row seven is also now very restricted it can't go here and if it went there there would have to be a v again dividing the one one and four because they add up to five so the one goes here seven eight is also disambiguate so there's a bit of a gimme at the start here I, i'm absolutely sure this wasn't what held thomas up so you can see where does seven go in in row seven of the grid if it went here it would be next to a three and there should be an x between them so it doesn't go there that's eight that's seven and we're off and running um okay now can we do any more tricks regarding this square can't be a two because it's next to a three so the two must live at the bottom of the grid and therefore it lives in one of those two cells Similarly with 7. 7 can't live here because it would be next to a 3 and there should be an x dividing it. So 7 also lives at the bottom of the grid. If you've watched me solve these before, you'll know that I do tend to miss these negative constraints. So I am really trying to focus on them today. Um, oh, no, hang on. Look, if we look down column 8... We've got a one, two, and a seven in the column. So what can this 10 be? Well, it can't be one, nine, two, eight, or three, seven. So that's four, six. Same in this column, look. Similar thing, one, nine, two, eight, four, six, all ruled out. That's gotta be three and seven. This one maybe as well. Yes, that one, this one can only be one, nine, two, eight, three, seven, and four, six ruled out. This one. Uh, now that one's not quite as constrained. That can be two eight or three seven. So this one's a bit less, a bit less good. Um, 
now. Ah, no, I see. I see. Right, okay, so there's a trick going on here. This is very beautiful. Very beautiful. Let us consider... In fact, it's gorgeous. Yeah, these dominoes. What can we put in them? Well, you might look down here and go, well, this one could be 3-7. Well, it can't be, and neither can this one either. Now, why? From a Sudoku perspective, it's absolutely fine for this to be 3-7. There's nothing in the column preventing it, nothing in the box preventing it. But there is a problem here, because this would add up to 10, and there should be an X dividing the cells, and there isn't. And it would be exactly the same if you try and put 3-7 here. There's no X dividing the cells. So in fact, um, in fact, this must be 1, 9 or 2, 8. That plane's getting lower and lower. One wouldn't want it to crash. Um, 1, 2, 8, 9. I think it's the same for this one, isn't it? Yeah, this can't be 3, 7 for the reasons we talked about. So it has to be 1, 2, 8 and 9. Therefore, we get a quadruple here. And we presumably this trick... Yeah, this... Well, no, okay. The trick does, is not necessary here, look, because we've got 1, 9, 3, 7 in the box already. So this one has to be 2, 8 or 4, 6 just by Sudoku. Same thing must be true of this one because this cell can't be 1, 3, 7 or 9. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8. That's, uh, whoopsie, 2, 4, 6 or 8. 2 can't go here anymore, therefore... Uh, okay, so let's look at this column because where does one go in the column? One's got to be in one of those cells because of this one here. So apart from that, we're left with, what is it? Five, seven, and nine. Seven can't go, th ah, is this a naked single then? Let's just double check that. Oh, you know how another way of looking at this is, though? Where does where does 9 could never go next to the 1? This beautiful. 9 can't go next to the 1 because there would have to be an X between them. So 9 is in one of those two cells. And it can't be there because there's a 9. So the 9 goes here. So that forces those two. So this was a naked single. That's a 5. These two, squ ah, these two squares are 1 and 7. And there's a 3 here. So 7, 1. We mustn't connect the 7 and the 3. These two squares, let's delete those. They've got to be 2 and 7. Uh, sorry, let me just try and spot something. I'm not racing today. Don't get me wrong. I'm not racing. Um, 5, look. That's got to go in one of those cells at the top there. Just because of its options within this box. So 5 is in one of those cells down the right hand side. 5 therefore is in one of these cells. 5 is the most useless digit though in XV Sudoku because the X's and the V's just never apply to it so you don't really get much use from it. Um, ah ha! Okay, so one thing I've noticed, if we look at this column now, we've got to place 3, 4, 5 and 7, and there's a 7 there. So the 7 can only go here in the column, which means there's a 7 in one of those three cells. Now 3, where does 3 go in this column now? 3 can't go next to the 7, so 3 must live down at the bottom there. What else do we need to put in? We need to put this... Uh, well, 2 is up here, so 2 is not there, is it? So we could just get the 2. The 2's been sitting there lonely for a while. This can't be... Oh, this is a naked single, because there's a 4, 5 in the row. So this can only be a 3. So these two are a 4, 5 pair. Let's put that in. So 
So we need these squares here to be 4, 5, and 8. Ah, th that one can't be an 8 because it's next to a 2. So I think this, this square here has to be an 8. It's the only valid position for an 8 in the box. That's not a 2. Oh, it's not a 2. Undo. So this is not an 8. And we can actually look, we're going to get these digits. Ah, we are, we are in fact going to get these digits because of the 2 here. This square has to be the 8 because we can't put the 8 next to the 2. So we get the 8 and the 7 and we need to put 1, 3, 6 into the row. This can't be 3 because it would be next to a 7. Uh, in fact, there's a 3, 7 here, I've just noticed. Look, scanning upwards, 3, 7 there means this is a 2. This is a 7. This can't be a 3. Oh, so 3 goes there in this box because it can't, uh, it can't go next to either 7. Th this 3 helps me out at the top. This has got to be a 2, 8 pair now. And now, now we can do the trick on here again. Because now we've got the same thing going on down this run that we've got going on down this run. These squares have got to be four, six, three, seven in some order. Therefore, this square is a one. This square is a six. This is a two nine pair. We can do it. The two is going here. Um, okay. Well, this has been a marvellous start. Now it's probably going to grind to a halt, but never mind. At least at least we've had the joy of a marvellous start. So those squares have got to be four and six. I'm just looking to see whether I can get anything from the negative constraint. I don't think I can. So what I think I'm going to look at now is these. I've got loads of columns here with effectively six digits in them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing much better than that. So let's have a look. We need one, six and seven into those squares. So I'll label it up and then see if we can spot anything. That can't be seven because there's a seven here. OK, not seeing anything better. Uh, this one, we've got one. We need to put two, five and six in here. So that, that's got to be five or six. Two, five, six, two, five, six. I'm not sure. This one, we've got to put four, five, and nine. Again, I'm not seeing anything here. Uh, I'm so sorry if I'm missing what's staring me in the face. It's very, I was watching one of Mark's videos yesterday and you know, it, it's so interesting. I mean, Mark's a brilliant, brilliant solver, but sometimes he isn't seeing things and I'm getting so cross watching the video. And then I'm thinking, but hang on, this is exactly what happens to you all the time. Um, it is very strange when you're recording these videos because basically your power of Sudoku solving disappears. Trust me. Uh, these are three, five and nine. Um, that's, ah, now that one can't be three, look. Ah, there you go. There we go. Three cells have got to be four, five, and nine. So that's a triple. Oh, this is beautiful. It's going to give me these two cells. If these cells have to be made up of four, five, and nine, that can't be a five. So this is a six, and this is a one, and now we might be cooking with gas. Let's see. Um, six can be removed from this square, and this square, and this square. And therefore, four gets removed from that square. Can we go? Can we do any better? That can't be three. Look, I don't know why have I got that. Can't be three because this is two. So that therefore can't be seven. Now, if I look along here, you can see that we've effectively got seven digits, and we just haven't placed three and eight. And annoyingly, I don't think we can place the three and the eight yet. Maybe we can, but I'm not quite seeing how. Um, so we're going to have to try and do something else. I feel like this six and this one are important. So, 
Ah, they are important. Look, um, one, nine, one nine pair in column two and column three. Now that means ones and nines have to go into two of these three squares. Well, can they be in a domino? Of course they can't, because if they are, you'd have to have an X between them. So this square is not one or nine. This is a brilliant puzzle, isn't it? The geometry here is just gorgeous. So this is a one nine pair. And I've not put a five in the box yet. So that's, that's got to be a five. That means this is a five, look. Yeah, the fives here all ruled out the five from there. I just didn't follow through on my pencil marks. So, but as usual, five is not that helpful. Hmm. Hmm. I suppose it gives us the five, four, five at the bottom. Ah, which gives us the six, four. So maybe I shouldn't be so disparaging about fives. They've actually been useful. Typical. Um, now that's got to be four. That gets me into my four, five, nine triple look if this is four we can use the negative constraint to remove one from this square therefore we can use the x to remove nine from this square this becomes a one or a two which means that we can mm, probably do some oh yes i can do something there's a one nine pair in row three so that square's got to be a two which means this is an eight because of the x which means that these are not two and eight. Which means this is three. This becomes a five nine pair. We still need to put a one in this box. These two squares are seven and eight in some order. That's got to be a three by Sudoku because it can't be a one or a nine. That's not three, that's not seven. This three fixes the eight over this side. Uh, I don't want to put nines next to ones. That's the only negative constraint. So I don't want to put a nine next to a one. Why do I look at this? I mean, that's an example. Why do I look at this square first rather than that square, which is next to a one? The mind boggles, or at least my mind seems to. Um, so now this has got to be a five. This can't be an eight. Now, what have we got going on? That's got to be a two because there's a five in the row. That's going to fix the four, fix the nine, fix the six. This can't be a four, six pair. I think we're going to solve this, um, which is good. This two, eight pair fixes that this is a five. That's a four because there's a nine beneath it. Four ruled out from there, so six is ruled out from here. Six, seven pair means this square's got to be an eight. That's got to be a seven. We can't put a one next to a four, so we can put the nine in, the one in. We can't put a four next, oh, this is gorgeous. You can't put a four next to this one. So that six and that four get resolved. I mean, they could have been resolved by that, but the way I did it was frankly far more beautiful. Um, one nine goes in here and here. One nine goes in here and here. This square must be a three, I think. That square is not a four. Six, seven. Ah, how does all this get resolved then? Ah, there's a three here. That's how it gets resolved. Mustn't put a seven next to a three. So the six, seven gets fixed. The six, seven gets fixed up there. That must be a four because there's an X relationship. This must be a three by Sudoku. The three and the seven get forced. The two eight get forced again. I could do it by Sudoku, but I'm gonna use this three to do it. Eight, two, eight, two. And that's how to solve Arvid's wonderful, wonderful XV. And that was gorgeous. The start, the start was to die for. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as much as I did. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what I missed. There's probably a whole legion of things. Uh, I do try, I promise. Um, and we'll be back tomorrow. We might do, I might try Fistimafel tomorrow, I think. I've seen there are a couple floating around there and they, uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're making me anxious. They've not been solved yet. So look out for that tomorrow and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.